Every year, we look at the most probable threats to your safety and security that you may face in the coming year. Fortunately, not all those threats come to fruition. Unfortunately, some do. We warned about the pandemic months before COVID, and we have warned about inflation and supply chain failures on this channel as well. Now, believe me when I say we don't want to be right about them all. We are trying to give you an accurate threat assessment and help you insulate yourself from future tragedies. This video will detail the 10 things you should be preparing for, the 10 most likely threats to your safety and security that you will face in the coming year. Any one of them would be bad enough, but any overlapping combination of them could lead to a large-scale collapse. In a follow-up video, I'll tell you what you can do to insulate yourself from the effects of these 10 threats. I'll release that video next week, so please consider subscribing to get notified when that video releases. For now, here are the 10 things you must prepare for in 2022. Download the Start Preparing Survival Guide to help you prepare for any disaster. I'll post a link in the description and comments section below or visit cityprepping.com forward slash get started for a free guide to help you get started on your journey of preparedness. Inflation. Without a doubt, the number one problem we all will be facing in 2022 is inflation and shrinkflation, leading to outright scarcity. Supply chain problems have made it difficult for producers to meet strong demand, especially for goods. Increases in energy prices and rents are also pushing inflation upward. After months of claiming inflation was transitory, officials in the United States and even around the world are somberly acknowledging that rising prices on everything will continue at least until the third quarter of next year. That's the rosy forecasts in the early days of a new variant, the Omicron variant, as a COVID-19 virus, and the virus is just one complication in the more significant crisis. Supply chain issues persist. Inclement weather decimating harvest continues. Fertilizer shortages threaten productivity, and so on. Many moving parts compromise the complications, creating the inflationary pressures the world is feeling right now, and it is a global problem. In the past, inflation tended to be tied to a single nation's economy that may have slightly impacted importing and exporting partner nations. The current financial crisis, however, is being felt around the world. The rising costs of fertilizer, fuel, food, durable goods, transportation, and shipping is being felt by most at home and is rippling through systems that normally provide core goods and services. As consumer demand remains high and production and supply remain low, expect the cost of everything to continue to increase. Any complication from a worker strike to a ransomware attack to a ship stuck in a canal will result in panic buying activities and an ever-increasing inflationary cost to you. It is more reasonable to project inflation to increase well into 2023 before prices stabilize steadily and supply and demand equations level off. COVID-19 mutations. COVID is becoming endemic, just like the influenza virus has evolved from its pandemic over a century ago. It can't be dismissed as simply running its course and burning out. It's here to stay and seemingly every week brings news of another variant. So long as it festers in populations and is allowed in host bodies to mutate, we will continue to have new variants. Some will be more contagious than others. Some will be more fatal than others. Mutations will continue and wave after wave will continue to circle the globe. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 905 points, or 2.53%, for its worst day of the year as news of yet another variant, the Omicron variant, began to spread worldwide. United Kingdom temporarily suspended flights from six African countries due to the variant. Israel Bar traveled to several nations after reporting one case in a traveler. Two cases were identified in Hong Kong. Belgium also confirmed a case. Each new variant will cause panic throughout the world. Some countries will react with travel bans. Some countries will lock down. Some countries will force vaccinations or proof of immunization. Greece, for instance, is planning to fine every month any citizen 60 years of age or older who remains unvaccinated. As governments try to get ahead of the infection rate, expect that personal freedoms will be more threatened. The COVID-19 mutations are also causing a massive change in our healthcare systems, as many healthcare workers burn out or lose faith after being repeatedly attacked for trying to save lives. Healthcare systems worldwide will become frailer, more susceptible to failure, and less likely to rise to meet the challenges of other disasters or more virulent strains of the current COVID virus. 
Eventually, we will attain a combined immunity between natural immunity and vaccinations to significantly lower the COVID virus's lethality and put it on par with the common flu. But that won't happen this year or next. That may not occur this decade. We can reasonably expect further mutations to appear through next year, causing panic amongst the people and extreme reactions by governments. Global Financial Collapse While 20 million Americans lost their jobs in the early days of the pandemic, Roughly 650 billionaires in America saw their net worth increase by more than $1 trillion. Just a billionaire class alone has grown exponentially in the last two decades. In the year 2000, the world boasted a total of 470 billionaires. Now there are 2,755 billionaires worldwide. Their combined net worth has grown over that same time, from $898 billion to $13.1 trillion today. 10% of the world lives in extreme poverty, the equivalent of less than $1.90 per day. Nearly half of the world lives on less than $5.50 per day. While the phrase, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer, isn't new, the world hasn't witnessed such an income disparity before, and we don't know how much longer the current systems can sustain the income inequities. In previous periods of disproportionate wealth, labor strikes were common, revolutions and political coups were frequent. Whole cultural shifts and mindsets, possibly like what we're witnessing with the great American resignation happening now, can occur. Thanks to the Panama and Pandora Papers and other leaked records, we know that the world's ultra-wealthy are far more interested in concealing their wealth and avoiding taxation or accountability for their sometimes ill-gotten gains. We don't know where this will end. This level of income inequality is unsustainable. The current financial system is a house of cards that could result in a cascading global economic collapse. Expect the problem to become even more exaggerated over the next year and in the years to come. Expect some economies to collapse and some governments to fail. Expect the ultra-wealthy to move away from fiat currencies in favor of land and cryptocurrencies to hold on to their wealth in an increasingly destabilized financial crisis. At home, expect to be working harder for even less reward. Labor Shortages a record 4.4 million Americans quit their jobs in September, accounting for 3% of the workforce. Many people are choosing to leave the workforce, and people are getting burnt out like medical professions. Younger generations, increasingly disillusioned with the system busting with cracks and flaws, are deciding that they no longer wish to participate in traditional ways. Factory shutdowns have kept some from working. Lockdowns and shifts in consumer habits led to massive job losses worldwide, and have left many bitter at their treatment by employers who so quickly cast them aside in favor of profits. Or they are simply reevaluating whether re-entering the sometimes brutal system is really a life choice they want to make. Worker shortages brought about because of closed borders or COVID infections have interrupted the supply of many goods and raw materials worldwide, and these labor shortages will continue through next year. In some cases, workers will recognize their growing worth in stock and strive for higher wages, bringing the free flow of goods and services to a halt. Expect that some goods and services will experience periods of drought. Expect prices to rise. Expect new competing visions of the worker's role in society and what an essential worker truly is. Expect all this and brace for continued instability in the labor force around the world. Global consumer confidence will continue to dip. Some will find new ways to work quit working altogether, or learn to make do with less. The labor force is at a watershed moment in time, and the full impact of this time remains unknown. Supply chain problems. From canals to lockdowns to ransomware to trucking, trains, and shipping, the problems with the global supply chain rose to prominence this year. While fixes are being applied here and there in one industry or another, the whole system lacks any central control and reels from the repercussions of failures throughout the line from raw material to end consumer. There doesn't seem to be any clear end in sight, and these problems will persist through next year and will be compounded by labor shortages and inflation. With any supply chain failing, panic buying can set in to further complicate the problem. The majority of experts, port operators, truckers, supply chain logisticians, economists, and more all agree on two things. We haven't yet seen the end of this growing problem, and second, we can't accurately forecast a date of when it will get better. The supply chain problems will persist into next year. How far into next year will largely be determined by this holiday season. Consumer demand and consumer confidence are significant factors influencing and driving the current instability in the supply chain. 
There are other factors, and there are many unknowns in the equation as well. A more significant global financial crisis, COVID, inflation, closed borders, labor shortages, natural and man-made disasters could each impact the already strained system, leading to even greater failures. Expect continued scarcity of some products. Expect to have to get by with less. Expect some barren shelves well into next year. Even the solutions being plugged in to right the global supply chain ship will be slow to be realized and complications will persist well into 2023. Food insecurity. Food prices are already up 30% around the world this year, but the world is facing the prospect of a dramatic shortfall in food production as rising energy prices cascade through global agriculture. CEOs of agricultural conglomerates worldwide are warning that crop yields will be down this next year for a host of reasons. The subsequent reduction in crop yields will come to you in the form of less food, higher prices, and fewer raw materials for agricultural byproducts. When the average consumer realizes the shortages are real, panic buying and hoarding could exacerbate the problem. Because of the tripling of the cost of natural gas, synthetic fertilizers in Europe have massively scaled back production. China is cutting exports to direct its fertilizer production to its growing needs. Canada's fertilizer mining operations are at half production. Without the synthetic fertilizer, global crop yields will be dramatically decreased. One recent study found that a doubling of fertilizer prices leads to a 44% increase in food prices, but fertilizer prices have tripled already and may quadruple in the coming months. This would lead to a 66 to 88% of food prices across all categories. Beyond fertilizer, we continue to see crop failures around the world. From high heat to floods to freezing temperatures, crops are failing at what seems to be an increasing rate. Our lack of agricultural diversity and dependence upon the production of crops in other countries may be about to cost us dearly in our actual food supply. Expect shortages of some foods into next year. Expect the price of all foods to continue to rise. Expect production and yields to be scaled back. Expect food insecurity to become a more significant concern for millions of people well into next year. Infrastructure Failures China has rationed powers to cities to maintain manufacturing output at the expense of its citizens. The Texas power outage this year was pretty much a repeat of the conditions that resulted in a power outage a decade before when the Groundhog Day blizzard resulted in rolling blackouts across more than 75% of the state. U.S. infrastructure was recently rated a D plus overall, with dams, roads, and energy scoring some of the lowest grades. In Italy, some 300 bridges are at a risk of collapse. Aging power plants in Europe, America, South Africa, and around the world have implemented rolling blackouts to prevent more extensive blackouts and struggle to meet consumer demand. Infrastructure is a roads, bridges, waterways, power grid, plumbing, and all the rest of the bones and arteries that make up a country and network us all together. Rising populations, lack of maintenance, and a lack of new investment in infrastructure components have put us all precariously teetering on the precipice of a cascading collapse. One major event can lead to a more extensive failure with far greater reach. The recent rain and flooding in British Columbia, for instance, have cut off the Vancouver port. Bridges, roads, and railways have been decimated. This exacerbated the already existing global supply chain issues. The number of ships backed up offshore increases every day while Canadians across the country cannot get the goods they need. These vital systems that keep water and electricity flowing, that deliver fuel and goods that allow us to connect with other regions, trade, and keep economies running smoothly, and making profits are aging and poorly maintained. We've already seen them fail in increasingly dramatic ways this last year. While several countries are focusing on infrastructure packages right now because they recognize the threat infrastructure failures pose to their national security and stability, throwing money and regulations at the problem doesn't fix the problem overnight. You can fully expect these failures to happen with greater frequency, and you can expect the range of their impact to be more comprehensive and to cross across multiple other systems. Cyber Warfare Maybe before this last year, you never heard of the term ransomware. This year, you heard about it in the news quite a bit. State-sponsored, or at least state-condoned cyber attacks shut down all rail traffic in Iran and gas pipelines in the eastern United States. Meat processing industries were shut down and water treatment plant chemicals were tampered with. The Washington, D.C. Police Department, CNA Financial Group, one of the largest insurance companies in the United States, and several other companies like Kia Motors and Accenture 
all had data locked up and held for ransom. Brintag, a chemical distribution company headquartered in Germany, experienced ransomware that affected North America and led to 150 gigabyte of stolen sensitive data. In recent years, eight cities across the United States as large as Atlanta, Pensacola, and Baltimore were crippled by cyber attacks. The cyber war is escalating and will continue to escalate now that it has become profitable and decentralized. Relatively anonymous cryptocurrencies allow for nearly traceless payments of ransoms in mere seconds. In some cases, these marauding hordes of hackers are directly supported by governments, and it has become a new cold war of sorts to destabilize conflicting countries. Where they are not directly supported and funded by governments, these same governments simply turn a blind eye to the activities happening within their borders perhaps even taking a share of the profits in exchange for staying on the sidelines. As businesses struggle to harden off aging technology against the growing hordes of profit-seeking ransom attacks, things will continue to collapse. That could threaten your water or power or food supplies. Even if you're not directly impacted, the high cost of ransoms will be passed on to you, the consumer. What we have seen this last year, as dramatic and massive as these attacks have been, has just been the early shots of a much larger war. It's been a skirmish far from an all-out orchestrated battle plan. Expect that these attacks will become more sophisticated and coordinated. Expect that these attacks will combine to inflict even more significant damage and larger ransoms. Expect these attacks to cripple increasingly more critical systems already hobbled because of infrastructure and supply chain issues. Whole countries may be destabilized in days as a result of future attacks. Deepening Political Divides the temperature of disagreement has gone from mild differences of approaches, but compromise nonetheless, to outright armed conflicts. Benevolent acknowledgement of differences of opinion has descended into name-calling, dehumanization, and in some cases an overt desire for succession in civil war. Politics have become so divisive in recent years that it has become the sole focal point for millions. Internet algorithms and media of a particular slant further feed the masses divergent narratives, for some, reality is entirely skewed, and the concept of working together to find solutions to the problems we collectively face is an impossibility as people dig into their sometimes completely false notions and beliefs. Civil unrest, armed insurrection, protests, and looting all remain distinct possibilities so long as the temperature of political discord remains so high. Facts don't matter in the face of what is perceived to be justified anger. Expect investigations to continue. Expect restrictive laws to try and control the slide into chaos to continue. Expect your freedoms to be ignored or overrun under the banner of one side or another's political beliefs. Expect the blame game to continue and few solutions ever achieved. In a world more replete with sound bites and pundits and leaders and solutions, in a world where outrage is the norm, expect the political divide to widen. Could the end result be an outright civil war, political reformation, or societal collapse? Only time will tell, but all would probably agree that the temperature is currently too high and a calm, resolute future doesn't appear to exist. Ecological Issues A catastrophic deluge hit western Canada. An atmospheric river dumped a month's worth of rain in under 24 hours and broke 20 rainfall records. A community called Hope in British Columbia received 252 millimeters, a whopping 9.92 inches between the 13th and 15th of November. Many roads, railways, and bridges were all washed out, cutting whole communities off and ultimately stopping the flow of goods from the Vancouver port, the largest port in Canada. A state of emergency has been declared, and many remain stranded, isolated, and surrounded by floodwaters. Earlier this year, a state of emergency was declared in the same area because nearly 300 wildfires prompted evacuation orders as they raced across the land. The lack of vegetation doesn't allow the rainfall to absorb into the ground slowly, but enables it to run faster across the landscape, washing out bridges, roads, and railways in the process. The fires were stoked by a high summer heat and dryness. The floods were caused by an atmospheric river, a La Nina condition we discuss in another video about this winter. These wild oscillations between opposite extremes of dry and wet, hot and cold, are becoming more commonplace worldwide. Last year, Australia faced the worst summer brush fires that it experienced in its recorded history and then floods. Europe endured one of the most extended stretches of winter cold in a century. Texas suffered a cold spell so long and cold that it resulted in a multi-day power grid failure. Summer floods in China knocked coal mines out of production. 
Floods in Canada forced potash mines to close. A drought in Taiwan, which typically receives over 100 inches of rain per year, forced the government to shift vital freshwater resources from citizens to the chip manufacturing industry. A Siberian heat wave is melting permafrost layers frozen over since the last ice age, and, as a result, releasing millions of metric tons of previously sequestered methane gas into the atmosphere. A list of countries affected by extreme weather goes on and on, and the phrase once in a lifetime has been replaced with a once in a decade, and once every five years or so. Eventually, these once in a lifetime weather extremes may become once a year events. Regardless of what you think may be the cause or the solution, if there even is one, these events will continue every year. Crops will be wiped out some years. Roads, bridges, and railways will stifle the flow of goods. Extreme heat, cold, or precipitation may force many inside for long stretches of time. Sagging power lines, poorly insulated power plants, weather, and wildfires will continue to knock out power supplies to millions. You would be mistaken to write off these events as one-offs. The fact is that they're occurring with greater frequency and will impact you with more regularity. Whether you fill the event through higher prices, food shortages, destroyed bridges, roads, or lack of power, ecological disasters will occur with increased frequency throughout 2022. There isn't any one solution that can fix this problem. Maybe the fated course can be altered even with every country's best efforts. Brace for it to get a whole lot worse and also for it to not likely ever to get any better. There are, of course, many more threats to our security and well-being than just East 10. And you have to continue to prep for natural disasters that will strike, maybe more than once in a lifetime. But you cannot ignore the genuine threat of these problems lasting well into 2022 and beyond. I wish I could say that things will get better, and I can see a parting of the clouds and sunshine coming through on the horizon. If you follow this channel for any length of time, you know that we're not solely stokers of doom and gloom. However, you can ignore the threats I've outlined here, and the window to prepare for them is growing smaller. Next week, we'll be following up with a video focusing on the 10 things you can do to face these challenges, so be sure to subscribe to this channel to be notified when that video is released. What do you think? Of these 10, which is the greatest threat? Is there a threat you'd like to add to this list? Let us all know in the comments below. I try to read many of the comments and respond to them when I can, and that's typically within the first hour of releasing a video. I can notify you when other videos become available if you subscribe to this channel. As always, stay safe out there.